stone, like there's a key beneath it, rusty from the dirt. This must be for the front door. Pity doesn't have the apartment number on it. This building has many apartments and a man can be in any of them. We'll just have to go in and see. This door has been closed with a padlock. A chalk drawn number on the board says number 11. It's a solid lump of metal, but the shackle is deeply corroded. A solid pair of chain cutters would make short work of it. Better whip out those cutters. You won't get very far otherwise. This door has been closed with a padlock. A chalk the shackle snaps like a twig and the lock falls to the floor with a little thud. It should be possible to enter now. After you, detective. Impressive sideburns. The name on the plinth reads Kras Mazov. Honestly, he does kind of look like you after all. Hold on a second. Is this why you broke in here? To find out whether you're Kras Mazov? Sure it is. Well, you both do seem to share an affinity for sideburns, but it seems like old Kras here didn't drink nearly as much as you. Ah, <sighs> very well. Let's look for identifying features then. Doesn't he have a birthmark right here? What about you? All right, but here's the big thing. Krasmasov looks Samaran, and you don't. Yes, he does. Look at his eyes. Wasn't his mother a Samaran immigrant? Good, so you're not him. It's decided. You are not the most famous philosopher of the modern period. The white star, the photos on the wall. I think we have broken into the apartment of a young communard. How fitting. Thank you. 
Yes? You hear someone walking around inside. Rearranging the furniture. The number on the panel says 10. The walking stops abruptly, but no one comes to the door. You can feel tension on the other side. A poor communard from the looks of it. The room is barely bigger than a closet. Do I have to open the door? Do you have a warrant? I'm not obligated to open the door if you don't have a warrant. Let's go. We don't have a reason to get inside that apartment. It's generally easier to do things if you have literally any reason. Cold never does any good for my bronchitis. <laughs> I'm fine. Fine. Don't you worry about me. <laughs> You're still worried. It's a... Now, what do you want from me, policeman? She's the cleaning lady. She knows the floor plan and the residence. Oh, you'll find plenty of Martins here. Don't you worry. Pea brain. Someone played a trick on you. Martin Martinez is a name for anyone who comes from Martinez, like Jim Jamrock or Raoul Ravagel. Oops, you really didn't get the joke there. I thought it was obvious. Anyway, officer, we don't have the witness's name. Yes, yes, I know who you mean. The scrawny boy who's always smoking like the devil, right? Somewhere in the building, a child starts crying. You hear a radio tuned to a talk show and someone taking a shower. What's he in trouble for? Talk? <laughs> he lives upstairs in room 28. Go to the balcony. It's one of those doors there. He's usually home in the evening. Thank you. We should go check out his apartment on the balcony. See if he's home. The streets will flow red once more, a great torrent rushing down Rue de Esperance. You wait and see. The streets will not flow red with anything. Who are you? 
I'm Cindy the fucking Skull. What else do you want to know? Date of birth, blood type, the last time I was tested for hep C. Go where? Accosting a minor? Listen to your partner, pig man. Keep your grubby hooves off little old ladies. That smell coming from her paint bucket. It's not paint. It's heavy fuel oil. Red dyed heavy fuel oil intended for exclusive use in government vehicles, to be precise. What did you think I was using? Aquarelles? Sucked it out of a cop's fuel tank myself. Back in Jamrock. She really did it. She's proud of it too. Something to think about next time you're driving around in your pretty little piggy carriage. The lieutenant furrows his brow at another one of your eccentricisms. Hatred, disgust, it's difficult to tell which of the two is more present in her girlish features. The woman on the boat does not notice her staring. That Ozon her. Someone's got to keep an eye on her. Ozon is an archipelago, two days travel away from Rivershaw. Its moneyed residents used to posh restaurants and upscale boutiques rarely have reason to visit Martinez. Probably the Wild Pines rep. We should talk to her. She's a professional negotiator, though. I have the feeling she will be very cooperative while telling us nothing. You should take the lead. Ask her unexpected questions, you know? Do your thing. Don't be afraid to get a bit wacky. Throwing her off is our best bet. Good idea, piggies. Run along now. Fuck her shit up good. Impound that boat while you're at it. I'd like to watch her swim back to us on. Can't you tell? I'm painting a beautiful mural, an aereo graffitio visible from low orbit. I haven't really started it yet. I'm waiting for the right words. We rarely see pigs round here though. Just union cabs. And my name's not Mona, so... She wants it to be something true and total. This place is severely lacking in havoc. Not even the occasional trash can fire to break up the tedium. I thought I'd mix it up, you know, summon the forces of crime and social chaos with a wall-sized invitation. Yeah? Thanks. I'm sure the inspiration will come to me now that I have an official RCM stamp of approval. You've lessened her desire to deface the building. I ain't no snitch, Pigstein. Go forth and forage in someone else's shit. No shortage of squealers in these parts. Actually, there is a shortage of people who talk to us in a normal, calm, informative manner. We weren't put on this earth to make your life pleasant, fucko. What do I care about some fucking tin eggshells? Ugh, all right, sad piggy. I'll give you this one. I saw a little girl in the fishing village running around with military grade handwear. Look cute as hell. If you haven't been there, the village is a shithole down the coast from the main plaza. Have a good time! No, no. That's all the snitching Cindy the Skull does for today. Actually, I don't even know why I told you what I just told you. I have a weakness for animals. It's the animal thing again. Damn it! Or a weakness for police officers, miss. Thank you either way. Watch your back, Ungular. You've got eyes on you.
The pockets of these new jeans are perfect for sticking your hand into. Makes you look cool, calm and collected. As your hand enters the pocket, your fingers brush against something. Soft, yet crinkly. Hey, it's a chewing gum wrapper. It reminds you of the fruity juice of apricots. You should inspect it closer if you have time. Something about the wrapper's texture is familiar. By the way, the raw materials were most likely exported from Seagai, the apricot suzerainty, and processed in Sir Le Clay into the apricot-flavored chewing gum loved by kids of today and yesterday. Mmm, something about it is familiar and not only to your fingers. The crinkled chewing gum wrapper. The worn label reads, Tutti Frutti. It smells faintly of apricots with a barely noticeable twinge of cinnamon. You feel compelled to point out that there's nothing fruity about cinnamon. It's a spice derived from tree bark. Can a used wrapper shrug? Seems like that's what the wrapper is doing somehow. This is not about flowers or bark. What is this about? Why are you looking at this wrapper? Good question. There is no answer or secret phrase written on the inside of the wrapper, yet you're drawn to it. Drawn by regret. Stop before you hurt yourself with a Tutti Frutti wrapper. Throw it away, please. You carefully fold the wrapper into a square before putting it back into your pocket, lovingly even, despite the strange feeling of regret. It's just a racist mug. What's there to read here? No, oh boy, here we go. What are you going to say about a broken, tossed away mug that you dug out of the garbage? But it was in the trash. Why not just call it out when you see it? Or do some volunteering work? Just finish your case, detective. It's the ledger you found in the trash. A pitiful cabbage of white and yellow papers hanging from plastic board, barely held together by a metal clip. This sad display is made complete by the faint smell of urinal cleaner. There's a piece of toilet paper, or is it cleaning tissue? No, it's toilet paper, desperately sticking to the back of the blue plastic clipboard. It's a metaphor for you. Below the pathetics, terror. Do not look into its blue heart. The acidic stench of rotting food is rubbed off on the cellulose. It now forms the base of the experience. This base surrounded by a faint air of spoiled meat, the stuff of death itself and then sprinkled liberally with the citrus zest of toilet cleaner. It's just toilet paper sticking to the back of the plastic clipboard. You can take it off if you want. Still wet, the toilet paper peels off the plastic easily. All you have to do is shake it off with your finger and voila, the ledger now looks marginally better. An aluminium block runs the width of the board biting down on the paperwork. Its crocodile teeth are the only thing keeping the papers together. A regular pencil, the tip worn down to nothing, has been attached to the clip. The surface is interrupted by a silvery sticker. It's rectangular, sparkling with iridescence. You don't know how you didn't notice it before. It is similar to the RCM watermark on your blazer the lieutenant mentioned. Didn't he say something about the headlights of his motor carriage? That you can read these there? What? Yes, uh, allogen watermark used for adding information to RCM property. It depends. Aside from an anti-counterfeiting stamp, mine has my station number and address. The information varies by date of issue. 
Maybe yours will have how many cases you've solved. How many years you've been on the force, he's thinking. It'll have that. Any capable light with the right wavelength will do. Yes, RCM vehicles have headlights tuned especially to reveal halogen watermarks. This means you can read the watermarks if you just turn the lights on. Okay. While a bunch of sodden papers sag from the clipboard in your hand, it's a sorry sight. They're not exactly white. They're yellowed in patches by sunlight and alcohol and covered in dense blue handwriting. Ink escapes into watercolor patterns, reaching its tendrils across entire pages. The paper itself is checkered with faint red lines forming short paragraphs. Once in a while, there's a red stamp that exclaims, case files commit to paper. The case files themselves are plenty. You count more than a hundred sodden, crumpled up, earmarked pages falling apart in your hands. They appear to be sufficiently organized and extremely dense, if mostly illegible. Work, strife, poverty, the Jamrock Quarter. These are handwritten logs of investigations dating back to January 51, this year. The exact number is hard to estimate, due to missing pages and an odd naming convention. But there are at least 20, maybe 30 cases, undertaken, not completed, mind you. It's the middle of March. You have attempted two cases a week on average. Huh? Two complex cases to undertake is a lot, yes. You really have to push yourself. I would not suggest it, lest you start making mistakes. Arson, petty theft, spousal abuse, handwritten logs on dozens of investigations date back to January 51. Stamped case files commit to paper. These are your last couple of months in Revachon. Precinct 41, Jamrock Quarter. Yes, it appears you employ a, shall we say, robust yet literary system. Each investigation has its case number written on the margins. Yet, still more tellingly, most are accompanied by a name. A title, one might say even. One that draws inspiration from snoop fiction and vespertine cop show staples. Yes, all caps. One is called the Next World Mural. Another, the Square Bullet Hole Murders. Another yet, the Unsolvable Case. Others appear more light-hearted. The guys on a couch in an unexpected location and the murder at the Ukar parlor. Even the rare article free collapsing tenement. Murder features prominently throughout. It's going to take an effort to piece these case files together, but it can be done. Once you're done inspecting them up close. You mean the alphanumeric? Officer, precinct, time of arrival at the scene? Oh, you mean the titular? Yes, well, so do I. In our defense, almost everyone in the RCM does. It's a holdover from the early days of the RCM, right after the revolution, when the organization had little idea how to do things. It persists in an unofficial capacity. Officers use these titles to refer to their work among themselves. Again, in your defense, I seem to have named one the man with the hole in his head. That was a real person. His death was real. Still, I named it that, to amuse myself. I pray his loved ones never find out. Rail spiked through the head. He died. It was a workplace accident. There is, for precisely, one more. Fifteen pages near the end remain untouched by the damage. The checkered grid forms a structure of passages, breaking the case into subtasks to accomplish. Once all the tasks are accomplished, the case is complete. The tasks you've completed flow out of the kind green ape pen in a brash freehand similar to the rest of the letters. The wording comes easily. It's almost robotically simple, a language developed for mental rigor and simplicity. Inspect the victim's body. Get the body down. Interview the cafeteria manager. It's not exactly poetry but poetry would be out of place. 
A satisfying slash sounds across the paper. You're done, it seems to say. And you, and you. Things to be done, and things already done. The composition of reality. This is an extremely useful tool for a detective of the citizen's militia. Now all that remains is to name the case. No, actually. Any ideas? Okay, okay. It's a good name, but it has one problem. This case has nothing to do with the setting sun. At all. It has nothing to do with something more concrete, perhaps? Do you have something concrete? Mundane. Usual. Usual is boring. We don't do that. Great. That's great. That's actually what I was thinking too. The Hanged Man. Good, strong name. We have a very good name for the case now. I'm going to start calling it The Hanged Man. It's good to be sorted, is it? You don't exactly close them so much as distance yourself from the smelly papers. They're a little further from your nose now. In the back, you see thin, translucent copy of paper. Some neon yellow, some bright red all covered in boxes, like marching armies. These look like official forms, waiting to be filled out. Then rip them from the binder and hand them out, according to type of form. Three, the topmost are misconduct fines, the middle ones are station calls, and the bottommost are field autopsy forms. Each is easy enough to make sense of. You don't have to be an intellectual giant to do police work. A dozen pages of thin copy paper, bright red in color. You see the parameters of a deceased human form waiting to be filled in. Age, sex, condition of internal organs. A monetary penalization ranging from 20 to 250 real. Severe cases allow for 1,000 real, but that requires special paperwork. The details of issuing these fines are spread out over the rest of the fields. These are quite sinister in turn. They give a date and time for the person to appear at the specified precinct police station. Below the call are the criminal charges you risk by not appearing. Yes, all that remains now is to fill those forms and hand them to people. Fines for wrongdoers, interview requests for bad guys, and field autopsies to dead guys. The rest of the stinking cellulose is much worse for wear. Being sandwiched between the board and the rest of the paperwork must have spared the fragile copy of paper. It's made of dark blue plastic, hard enough to beat someone to submission with. The edges are rounded, however. The U4 size board feels thick and heavy in your hand. Light shimmers on its wet surface. On the back you see the embossed letters RCM. Blue. The blue heart. Don't look into it. Something rattles inside, ever so lightly. Is there a hidden compartment? Permeables. It's not hidden per se. The compartment is made for permeable materials that would get damaged if something happened to it. The plastic shimmers like lapis lazuli, but it is not see-through. You cannot see to its center. With your hands, you four sized pages hang from the clip screwed to the top of the board. Is not what you end up doing. You squeeze the plastic to slide it open, but nothing happens. Then you bend it some, then crack it. The goddamn thing is stuck. The ledger quivers in your hand. As it shakes, the pages rustle. This pathetic mess suddenly afraid of you for some reason. Yes, you can piece them together using the alphanumeric code on the margin. It always begins with HDB41. Then, date of initialization and time of arrival on the scene, followed by the title. 
For example, HDB 41120 the next world mural. Why, yes, your precinct number is 41. Every last alphanumeric in the files begins with it. And these are your case files. It's safe to say HDB are your initials. I got nothing here either. Logic really isn't the best faculty to have this conversation with. But it's, yeah, we're staying out of this business for now. HDB is bad news from yesteryear. It's shit, Honcho. It takes about half an hour to piece one together using the system you've devised. Where do you want to start? This one is relatively easy to reconstruct. Overnight on 1202, a graffito, nay, a mural, appears on an eight-story tenement overlooking central Jamrock. The building is a sparsely inhabited ghost tower, part of a failed real estate development called Grand Coudon. The mural is enormous. Two silhouettes, a man and a woman, are kissing. The text cut into their form reads, True love is possible only in the next world. For new people, it is too late for us. Wreak havoc on the middle class. People call it that thing and that fucking thing. It's visible for miles. In two days, the station's complaints desk gets clogged with requests to remove the bummer. You and your partner are assigned to the case. The graffito crew is easy to track down. Only the Bell Letchers have the literage of industrial paint to cover the surface. One of the graffito artists is rumored to be rich. They take responsibility for the execution, but not the design. The ideologue of the next world mural, as the crew calls it, remains an unknown. The case files do not show you finding the author of the design. The crew agrees to clean up after themselves. However, your partner, JV, is against the removal, citing public support for conservation. This leads to a debate in Precinct 41, which then spreads to the streets of Jamrock, ending in a rare plebiscite organized by you and the rest of Row 3. The 9,000 people subjected to the mural's message, all of Lakeside, Central Jamrock, and Villa Lobos, plus half of the eminent domain, participate in the vote. Although the case begins with what appears to be a lot of rambling on the streets as to how juvenile and stupid the mural is, given a choice between two options. A staggering 78% of voters choose to keep it. Turns out the opposition were a loud minority and that love truly is possible in the next world for new people and it is too late for us. In any case, it appears to have been a rare case of civil activity in the quarter and agreement as well. What do you want to tackle next? Not much has changed in the meanwhile. A bunch of sodden papers still sag. Lonesome. Long way home. Here we go. Home awaits. Walk past Station 41 and through the market. Past the Boogie Street spearhead to the other side of the lake. The frozen eye at the center of the district. Then past the video rental store on the corner. There at the end of a street lined with pine trees. A small house, no larger than a matchbox. 11 Voyager Road. You no longer live there. Those times are gone. And so are those people. Why did you come here? Why are you still here? And where's the dealer? You have to get back to work. That's all you have now.
Yes, you. Word on the street is you're ready to start building communism again. You keep saying things like, down with the bourgeoisie, eat the rich, sodomize the landowners, impel all people who have more than 25 real in their pocket, literally murder all human beings regardless of their political beliefs, that kind of stuff. Oh yes, the mask of ambivalence. Don't deny it. You're about to rip it off and reveal the monstrous seven-eyed lamb of global communism that would devour and masticate mankind. Everyone can see that. So tell me, do you have any questions before we fire up the big communism builder? Or do we get right down to it? Very well. I guess no one will build communism then. Tell the working man it's over, unless anyone has objections. No objections. It's mathematically impossible to achieve a classless society. Everyone knows this. Did someone mention cocaine? Are we doing cocaine? No. I'm sure I heard someone say cocaineism. Anyone? Anyone else? There's no one? There's one. You should build communism, precisely because it's impossible. Shift in temperature, the air chills around you. Dust settles on the stony floor. A former architect stands before a slice of window, a room plan in her hand. A cold wave has made the air in the building stand still and frozen, with temperatures falling down to minus 20 degrees Celsius. It's red from the cold. She's breathing on her fingers, clasping the plan. 
traces of sadness are visible in her expression. Faint pencil lines on paper depict the same place, but a missing eastern wall connects the room with the neighboring apartment. Ideas for arranging the furniture have been jotted down. It's clean and empty, with new tapestry embellishing the walls. A standard HB graphite pencil has fallen off a three-legged stool in the middle of the room. She had an eye for beauty. What happened here? Put your emotions aside. Try to focus on abstract, impersonal things. But this reeks of sadness. It will still be accessible through the apartment next to it. That one didn't have a door. Sadly, nothing of great value remains here. Indeed. Just a five-pointed star. It's an inverted white pentagram cradled in a wreath of antlers. The iconography of communism, in other words. I'll get my armistice handy, detective. He doesn't actually reach for his gun. The star and antlers was developed in the sixth decade of the last century and quickly adopted by Mezov and the communards during the revolution. Even today, half a century after, the star and antlers retains the ability to evoke hope, disappointment and fear in equal measure, to symbolize the toppling of the old order. Also, some social democrats were already using it. The wreath of antlers represents a natural crown it was about building a society that could exist in accord with the natural world and at the same time above it, because white is the color of peace. Nothing at all yet. Right now, it's just meaningless shapes on a wall. Just an ordinary wall, nothing to see here. sailing boat, smiling as you approach. Her green raincoat glistens with droplets. Good evening, officers. 
I'm Joyce. Joyce L. Messier. I represent the board of Wild Pines, the owners of the harbor. You gentlemen must be from the RCM. Nothing, honestly. I've said it to every drunk in town, and you're the first one who's responded. Relax. She meant it in jest. Beaten, my maiden name. Beaten, my maiden name. Um, I meant you, the Revachol citizens' militia, the police. I'm glad to see you here. She is unfazed by your rudeness, probably chucking it up to local custom. I was dispatched to handle a strike, not a lynching. Anything I can do to assist the RCM in this matter, I will, gladly. That is good to hear, madame. My colleague will take the lead on this interview. I should let you know that he is recovering from an unusual medical episode. Very unusual but I can assure you of his ultimate competency. How interesting. I wish you a swift recovery. In the meanwhile, you have my full cooperation and the full cooperation of the Wild Pines group. What we do. I'm afraid I don't speak for Wild Pines as a whole. It's a giant undertaking. The Pines' core competency is logistics. Container shipping, freight, that sort of thing. See those airships there, blinking? Those are the shipping side of things. And that is the terminal. Another subdivision deals with energy, oil and gas exploration. Offshore platforms. I'm not at liberty to discuss the company balance sheet, but I can tell you that last year, the company booked more than 20 billion real in revenue. A billion? Yes, past a certain point, numbers begin to seem imaginary, but they are quite real for the 72,000 employees who depend on Wild Pines for their paychecks. A conglomerate the size of Wild Pines is like a shark. If it stops moving and growing, it will die. Then what becomes of those 72,000 families? It is a tremendous responsibility. They started as an exploration and cargo fleet conducting trade between the Samaran and Insulindian Easterlers 250 years ago, when pine ships explored the South Seminese and charted Lormantang on behalf of the suzerain. Centuries of care, deliberation and madness have gone into this endeavor. Vessels passed through the great unrest to re-emerge with apricots in tow. The logic of the system is totalizing. It's taken everything from its employees to build it. You mean aside from being the terminal's legal owners? Who are responsible for moving 8% of the world's cargo? We built this district. All the best parts of it. Rue de saint Gislain, with its bastions. The plazas, meteor and mosaic. Even some of the old street lamps have been put back thanks to the investments from the WP. Before Martinez was swallowed by the industrial harbor, even before it was part of Revachol, long before Terminal B was erected here, the Pines built it as a resort for its Revacholian employees. A company getaway, for a weekend or a summer holiday. Then came the revolution. But that's another matter. I'm here to make sure the Pines can fulfill their responsibilities to the place they built. With your help, hopefully, says her warm tone. Is what you want to say, but it isn't that easy. Is look at that lady. Take a gander. Squint your eyes, bub. A well-kempt, yet tastefully short, bob of dark hair. Despite the first hints of grey, 
she's elected to keep it. Oh, natural, shaped into a permanent wave. Late while dull orange pearls hang from her earlobes, red from the cold. Her light green eyes scan you, full of knowledge and worry, wealth and all its possibilities. These are the kind eyes of the rich man that seem to say everything is possible, within reason. Now look at you, you misery-clad simian, barely able to tie your own laces. Your armpits are lakes, a scythe of booze precedes you, your hair sticks to your forehead and your underwear feels uncomfortable. You're poor, poor as balls. You can't ask this person for money. You're too. You think your little communism protects you from this feeling. No. The more demeaning it is to grovel at her feet. As I was saying, if there's any way I may be of assistance, please don't hesitate to ask. Voila, you're doing it. Of course. How much do you need? She's surprisingly nonchalant about this. Could it be that she somehow knows more about your predicament than she's letting on? That's a good sum. Not too small. Not fantastically large. She removes a few notes and hands them to you. The paper is cold and oily to the touch. So, I hope I didn't just bribe you, officer. It may not be technically illegal under the Emergency Act, but still. You're right, ma'am, that donations are permitted under the Emergency Act, and seemly as it may be, as long as they are properly logged with a precinct. Which he most certainly will do. Now, how else can I help the RCM today, besides supplementing its salaries? Quite a few things, I'm afraid. The information I'm to share with you includes sensitive trade secrets. For the sake of my employer, I have to ask for your names and badge numbers. Of course, ma'am. We should have introduced ourselves. I am Lieutenant Kitsuragi, from Precinct 57. And this is my colleague from Precinct 41. I'm afraid he doesn't have his badge at the moment. I hope mine will... How curious. Why is that, Detective? Awkwardness washes over the conversation. The woman doesn't like this turn of events. I see. So, are you saying you lost your badge during the course of this episode? Oh dear. <sighs> Some kind of encephalopathic amnesia. I don't even know how to respond. I do believe you, naive as that may sound. I simply can't imagine what you gain by faking such a condition. As I said, ma'am, his technique may be very unconventional, but he is an officer of the RCM. Of course, I sympathize, but I'm afraid I simply can't share anything more until I've seen that badge. Hang on. She's a professional negotiator. She should be open to some sort of mutually beneficial arrangement. Feelings will guide the way. I assure you, it is no small matter for me either. We all share the responsibility for disarming this situation. I hope you have a badge for me as soon as possible. She's silent. The wind flaps the sail above her. Officer. You know, 
I don't mean to sound cold, but if you want something, you have to give something back. More than just guilt. You're doing it. Despite your own best efforts, you're still getting in. So I'll be frank with you. If I'm going to break protocol, I need to be able to justify it to my superiors. They're going to want to see something tangible. The Union is conducting drug trade out of the harbour. It's an open secret in Martinez. Surely it must not come as a complete surprise to the RCM either. Perhaps it's time to look into it. Or you can find your badge, which honestly seems like a lost cause. Detective, a word in private before we continue. Honestly, I was expecting you to use your unorthodox technique to keep her off balance and, you know, not volunteers to be her henchmen. This woman is running circles around us. She might have known about your misplaced badge all along, or she's simply an adept improviser. Either way, we've played straight into her hands. He doesn't let it show, but there is a limit to how much the consequences of your unprofessional behavior can cost the investigation. Maybe this is all her plan. She might have heard about you. I wouldn't go that far. Her reaction did come off as sincere to me. I think she's just quick to adapt. She's a professional, after all. I'm sure you will, detective. No. If there is reasonable suspicion, we must investigate. Otherwise, she could claim we are siding with the Union, or that we are on their take. We'd never hear the end of it. What I propose is, we ask her, then we investigate, briefly. But do not share the outcome of this investigation with her. We tell her it's done and demand for her information on the lynching. Oh, that would be fantastic, but do we have the time? The world is large and your badge is eight by six centimeters. The situation might have changed drastically by the time you locate it. Time is of the essence. You could request a new one from your station, but that would literally take months. your back every time you bring out the measuring tape. René, you're a man with a fork in a world of soup. Please, let's just try to enjoy the game, all right? I'm trying to, but you keep breaking my concentration. You're old. I can see that. We're both old. Now stop grabbing your ass like it's a girl. These manly men are playing balls. This is a ball. Grab a ball and play it. Don't ask questions. Shoot first. Ask questions never. That's the spirit. Don't even waste your breath asking about the game. They wouldn't know anyway. They're way past their prime. You are immediately surprised by the ball's lack of weight. No matter. You'll make it work. God, this is right. You feel the familiar tremble of excitement and adrenaline that precedes every victory. Time has frozen. The cold metal ball is surprisingly smooth against your neck. It has a pattern on it. Probably a sponsored ball. Yours would only be covered with bumps of learning and scars of victory. Already, your muscles are adjusting to the weight, the nervous system calibrating, until you and the ball have merged into a single entity. The man-ball is ready. 
A chilly breeze ruffles your hair as you stand there, feet firmly planted. All sounds, smells, even the wind, everything fades until the only thing left is the union of man and boar. your problem I don't care if you are a cop you do not just ruin someone's game it's so goddamn disrespectful you vandalized our game son we can't play tonk with five bull well it's damn well isn't it's petonk you ruined a petonk game we want our boot. Take it easy, Rene. This is just a misunderstanding, isn't it, officer? Of course there's arm done, you iron slug. You are as a goddamn bull. Will this... No, it will goddamn not. Thank you, officer. This is really something... Honestly, I think it's better than our old bull. Ugh, uh, mon dieu. All right, all right, fine. What do you want, officer? You never know. He might know something. This is a good vantage point. Unfortunately, I don't. Unlike most of the locals, I have no qualms about assisting law enforcement. But this affair has passed me by completely. In Martinez, the union is the law. So can you really blame them? Cop is a pejorative term. I don't have a problem with policemen. On the contrary, I admire the effort to bring order to our streets. If I knew, I would not be afraid to tell you. I simply don't. I'm an old man, not a coward. The daily business of the riffraff no longer concerns me. This is a man with a lot of past, but little present, and almost no future. Yes. The terrain here provides an interesting variety to a familiar game. I do. Fire from heavy artillery. Why what? Because that's what happens when communists hijack your country, execute your supreme leadership, and turn your capital into a slaughterhouse. You use heavy ordnance to clean up your home. Sadly, no. It was the foreigners who brought them to their knees. We fought valiantly. Too valiantly. So valiantly we got licked. Should've fought dirty. Like they did with this suicide sex cult propaganda and mad anarchist women strapped to shrapnel bombs. We didn't so, and we lacked caliber. God bless him, but the suzerain's cannon simply weren't big enough. It was probably a bit more complicated than that. Because this place is a damn beachhead! Had to soften the commies up first. Yes, the military coordinated amphibious landing to take back Revachel. Martinez was used as one of the three footholds in Revachel during Operation Deathblow in 08. The other two are off in Stella Maris and the Delta. This here is blood ground, where coalition boots first made landfall and cleaned those rabbit dogs out. Most likely, we're playing petonk on their mangled corpses. Blood ground. You got old René going there. Like he isn't hungry enough already. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Don't get me wrong, officer. I hate those foreign dogs, but... Uh, the enemy of my enemy and all that. They're the lesser evil. 
Damn right, son. They let the fire off. The rest of the city got cleaned up, but Martinez they keep as a monument. And now the Union Socialists are practically running the place. Well, it's your own damn fault. You, we, the Coalition, Revachol, whoever you want to blame, never finished the job. Officially, the party never surrendered. Of course they still all influence. You don't even begin to truly understand the players on the table, let alone the specific circumstances surrounding the... Thinking men have opinions on these things. Present one. Preposterous! Surely you... I would have preferred if the right honorable King Guillaume returned to Revachal. Or even if that damn clan Fussel had risen from the grave and led us. Sadly, that... This royal failure weighs heavily on him. Instead, all that is just, holy, and beautiful in the world was wiped away, and now it's neon signs with toothpaste ads everywhere. This is just what the commies wanted. This was their plan all along. This, it doesn't. That was 100 years ago. Ain't got nothing to do with anything. The suzerain is the king! Has everyone forgotten already? It's no use talking to you. You were still in daddy's borders when it happened. When we took our last stand against the fifth and rode the cavalry straight into gunfire.
Oh, it's you again. Are you looking for a die? Can I help you? Yes, have you got it? Well... Great. Thank you, officer. That's all I wanted. Payment for services rendered. It's good you paid before 9pm, or your door would have been locked electronically. Please pay for each night in advance, starting tomorrow. 20 real per night. I'll take a room here, too. Of course. Always happy to have officers from the RCM as guests. Anything else I can do for you? Thanks. I hope you found what you were looking for. How strange. I certainly didn't put them there. The Trash Collection Service, CS Municipal. I don't see why they would put anything in the trash, though. Ah, the elusive CS Municipal. I doubt we'll be able to track down who was sent here last and when. This will have to be one of those little threads that solves itself. On Clinton Street, near the Boogie Street Diamond, a small truck rattles down an alleyway. It stops by a rusted trash container. Two men, their faces rough and swollen, jump out. They look at the container, despondently. CSM is written on their backs. Thank you, anyway. Sylvie had the keys before I got here, and I can vouch for her. I can vouch for all my stuff. None of us would tamper with the crime scene. Yes? Another thing. Great. I love those. Yes? Still nothing. The lieutenant gives you a he doesn't like where this is. This door can only be still the lieutenant. He doesn't the 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 lieutenant he doesn't like The bed is cold and not particularly inviting, but it's yours. A mirror hangs on the bathroom wall. In it, your face adorned with the expression. A mirror hangs on the bathroom wall. In it, your face adorned. 